Hello, hello, and welcome back to my channel and my video series. I'm building out my Expedition Camper. This video series, number 58, we're going to be installing some water tanks for total water tanks for fresh water for over 100 gallons of fresh water and so it's gonna be great this is gonna be a little bit of a challenge though here's a little recap of what happened in the last video and camper building continues with another water tank i have four fresh water tanks we're right about at six inches right there six inches it's crazy right that there's that much thick but nonetheless it is definitely a little bit frustrating that it's nowhere near close to the 4.75 inches with that big bulb. And so I'm gonna have to actually compress that bulb with the cabinetry. Fortunately, I've got this nice aluminum cabinetry framing that I'll be able to put a lot of pressure on and be able to compress that down. That will not be a problem. I only have one more of these fittings if I don't get it right. Oh yeah, that's a beauty. That is a beautiful fitting. Look at that fitting. And this light, this white plastic, it's it's kind of stuck on me. There we go. I don't know if you can really tell, but I've got lots of little red marks now on my arm from the burns of this plastic. Going to be a good watertight fitting. So I hope that is. Let's put this down. Let's go test this out. Yeah. All right, we continue on with the sewing cabinets and I'm so excited to be doing this right now because it's starting to take form and function. And once the cabinet framing is in, I can then complete installing appliances, which is a really big deal because I can get these big things out of my garage, make some more room in my garage, actually do some work in my garage, it's gonna be great. I can also start installing the electrical and the water system and that's what I'm doing right now is I'm actually taking apart the lower portion of the passenger side kitchen cabinet framing because it's all glued up. It's been curing for a few days now, so it's nice and solid. And I have one more fresh water tank to install. I have four total, four tanks. Two big ones and two small ones. The small ones are going in basically the toe kick area at the base of those cabinets because those are completely unusable spaces at the base of the cabinets anyways. Who wants a really drawer pulling out at floor level and have to bend down to it, right? So I create a little toe kick, raise the bottom of the cabinets up. The base of those, I have a, a four and three quarter inch tall water tank. And that brings my total water capacity to just a little over 100 gallons, which is pretty fantastic. That was my goal, is to try to be at about 100 gallons, and I hit it. So I'm excited about that. And with the four tanks, um, they'll all be isolated by valves, and so I can separate them out if I ever need to for cleaning, for in case there's a leak, or something of that nature, right, um, or whatever. So... Anyways, I'm just taking apart the solar cabin. I want to show you guys just how excited I am because of how well these things fit. It's great when things do come together. There is a little bit of a problem with these water tanks. They're perfect in two dimensions, but not the third. Very much like my batteries, but I'm still going to make it work. Let me show you. All right. So I took off this one frame here that's going to go over the top of the tank once this comes in. Let me show you how well this thing fits. Voila. See how well that fits? Pretty darn close, right, on both ends here and on the height. But you can see the height's my issue. This is where I have extra height. It, the tank is actually four and three quarters inches when you count this space here, but it's incredibly bulbous, and you can see how much it bulbs up here. Let's see if I have a tape measure handy. We'll measure this out, actually. How much is sticking up right now? Ready? Look at that. It is one and, call it one and a half inches. Uh, so, here. See that? One and a half inches that's bulbing up. Now this is highly unusual. I've had a lot of uh, freshwater tanks and greywater tanks were molded for my van, uh, my van conversion and also now, of course, for this project. And this is the first time that any of them have ever been so bulbous. I think I had, I have four or five of them in my van that I had rotor molded up. And here in this camper, I have a total of eight, three greywater tanks and four freshwater, seven, <laughs> four freshwater tanks. So this is really bold enough, but I can compress it down like I've done over on this side. Hard to see right now because I've got some framing stuff just laying here that I'm about ready to install to build this cabinet out. And that way I get my lower refrigerator installed. And I say low refrigerator, I think I've explained that, but I actually have two refrigerators, actually really three. I have two drawers. That can be a fridge or a freezer, either one. So for really long-term extended travels, I can, or a trip to Costco and a long trip, just load up the freezers or, or the refrigerators, uh, the two that it can be either one. And then the upper is a swing-out refrigerator, so the main refrigerator. So I'm really excited about that, but I can start getting those installed here. So I'm just getting this last freshwater tank installed. 
and I got to take off this one more piece here so I can get the, the vent underneath there. And uh, so we'll get this thing installed. So let's get it going. Oh, I did install that tightly. I will give myself some credit there. Get that out of the way for now. Slide this out of the way. Here, let place set down. Pull the tank out. Oh, look at that. So beautiful. It just fits so perfectly like that. Love it! <gasps> wow, that vent is way closer there than I had anticipated. But it's okay. It'll work. It's just going to be tight. Let me actually get that fitting in right now. Let's do that. So what I'm doing right now is installing all the water tank fittings. I already had pre-installed the lower tank fittings, the interconnects between the tanks and the, essentially the drain and the fill, which are a common drain and fill at the bottom of these tanks. And now I'm installing the vent now that I have this installed. And I pre-installed the lower tank fittings because they're pretty hard to get to down at the floor level. And so that way, before I install the water tank, they're just much easier to get to. I'm also keeping a little bit of pressure on the top of this tank because of its convexness, its, you know, its bulbousness as it bulbs out here from the uh, manufacturing process. Not because any air is trapped in there. I thought that the when I received the tanks with how bulbed out they were, that would just be air pressure be released from the inside of the tank once I drilled holes in it, but that was not the case. It did not take away that bulbousness. So they just got a little bit over pressurized during the manufacturing process. So I'm just putting on this last vent tank fitting now, holding the tank down. I'm gonna push into its final position which is really contained underneath the framing here. And then I'm also pushing it up against the outside wall. Normally I want water tanks more on the inside for of course the weight you know, balance. Although because I have exactly the same water tanks on both sides in exactly the same position, it's very well balanced already as it is the two essentially equalize or balance each other out. And there's a pretty small interconnect hose between them so not a lot of water can move between them should the camper start getting off level in some way. But I'm going to leave a little more, a little more space, a little more of an air gap on the front side of the tank or inside the side of the tank because that's where my electric air heaters are going to go. But I'll have a little bit of ventilation so that air can get through a toe kick, ventilated toe kick, which will pull air into where the air heaters are going to go, just in front of or behind the tanks on the front or rear of them. And so, anyway, so that's how it's going to go. So, installing this up and it's getting close, sir. We're getting something done, getting water tanks installed. That's at least the start of a water system, right? Now I'll go over more of my water system a bit, and why I chose certain fittings I have. All right, now that my water tank's in its final place, it's resting, final resting home, it's time to, uh, to get these, everything tightened down, buttoned up, so not only the cabinet is extremely tight, but the tank is fully contained inside the cabinets here. And by actually being a little bit compressed down uh, because of the exact fitting and also a little bit of bulbousness of the tank, it actually now the tank will not be able to move. I mean, there's no water in there right now, but with all my force, I am rocking the whole camper. I can see it move, move back and forth roughly about two or three inches in each direction. So it's solid in there. Once I go ahead and get this cabinet more built up, I'm going to go ahead and, and restrain it. There's only about a finger gap on one side and that's it. It won't be able to move in forward position. I'll be fully contained in that. So it can only move at a finger gap to the inside. In the rear, it'll also be contained in there with a, another interconnect going between the tanks uh, here and the framing that will fully support it in this place. So it's not going to be able to move at all. But, you know, just to make sure, it really can't move very far no matter what, but I will make sure, just make sure it can't move at all once I uh, get everything installed up here. And uh, so there you go. So that's the last of my, my four, four freshwater tanks now installed. And so that is the, the balance of my fresh and gray water tanks. And now we just have to simply do the interconnects and the, uh, the plumbing between them with the isolation valves. 
and get that installed as is Kevin framing going on. But right now I'm going to move on to the framing on the pass, or excuse me, the driver's side kitchen cabin here so I can install the lower refrigerators. And I say lower refrigerators, the lower refrigerator freezer drawers and also the surprise wine fridge. I feel a little sheep is saying that, but yes, I'm going to have a wine fridge. And really it's not because I drink a lot of wine and only hold six bottles anyways. It's a small little fridge. It's very efficient. doesn't use much energy, but the idea is that, you know, if you're parked out in the Death Valley or the Sahara Desert or out in Africa and you, you know, instead of leaving your wine out, I know it's a terrible thing, leave your wine out at, you know, 80 degrees or something while you're away from the camper or just in normal operating conditions without the air conditioning on, yeah, it's going to be a real bummer to drink warm wine. So this will keep the wine cool or other beverages as well. So, you know, occasionally you might need to pull up some champagne to celebrate something, whatever it is right? Um, offer somebody some wine, whether it's chilled wine or at least some red wine that's kept at a comfortable temperature. So that's going to be a small little fridge. So that's a little bit of a, of a luxury instead of Phil little sheep is saying that, but it was a hard decision I made. It was the last really appliance I decided to buy, but I did buy it. And so I've got a space over here set up to install that as well. So I get those two things installed, get some room over there. And then over here, I can install the washer and dryer. So that was an essential when I planned out the construction of this camper, designed this camper. And the reason why is because when you're going on long extended travels, sometimes you can't always find a washer and dryer. And also being somebody who likes to get out and exercise aerobically, meaning sweat, uh, mountain bike or do a trail run or something like that on a daily basis, that that is problematic, right? When you carry on a bunch of sweaty, dirty clothes over a long period of time. So having a small little common combo washer and dryer will enable me to keep clothes clean along the way and not build up a whole bunch of smelly, dirty clothes. So a real nice benefit, no doubt about it, and not have to stop at a laundromat along the way, be able to be self-sufficient. That's one of the other key requirements I wanted for this camper is to be able to be self-sufficient for long-term extended global travels. So that's one of the requirements for that. So I can get the washer and dryer and the lower fridge and the wine fridge, and then that will get three big appliances out with only one appliance left, and that's the upper main fridge. So that'll make some room in my garage, which is key, because I need that room to, build to keep building stuff.